Good morning everyone. Here we are once again driving to work. So we have a bit of time to talk about arm wrestling. Uh, I think we should uh, once again discuss East versus West 11 a little bit. I did go my own live show before and then we went to talk with Angie Terzi as well but I thought that I would just um, make another video to summarize that event it really went uh, super well for me um, I did manage to get the title I got the beautiful belt as a trophy so um, just try to end it in the future but most importantly I was able to beat an opponent who is um, really somehow um, probably my biggest hardest um, challenge just because of his uh, way of pulling and his like his style his build much much short like a bit shorter than me which allows him to be a lot efficient in some techniques like hook and tricep press and it almost kind of forces me to use the top roll even if I wanted to hook I feel like uh, it wouldn't be smart just because of how my my arm is a bit longer and mechanically it's not as efficient so yeah, just uh, um, the fact that I was able to finally find something which is effective against him. I feel like that really, having that tool in my arsenal is really gonna help me in the future as well. But let's start to discuss what exactly happened and um, how did I manage to beat Daniel this time even if most of the people really thought that Daniel will crush me, like he always does. Uh, so yeah, I guess step one is still, I need to open his hand, I need to open his wrist, his fingers. If I don't manage to do that, that pretty much means that we are in a hook. And... Uh, I would never be able to generate enough power uh, while having much longer levers. Daniel is super compact, so um, yeah, stylistically it just doesn't even make sense for me to fight in that position. And yeah, that's what happened in one, round 1 and 2. I did not manage to um, uh, attack correctly. I did get underneath him a little bit and then I felt like okay I should probably give it up didn't, waste, didn't want to waste any energy in that losing battle um, I also had some other I, uh, ideas or directions to go to so I didn't necessarily panic too much yet It is sometimes a little bit difficult to find exactly the direction um, for my kind of low hand uh, technique because it does it, like the elbow positioning is important, um, the hand and finger positioning is important, and sometimes yeah, I need to readjust a little bit just to make sure that I hit it right. So, anyways. Um, Round three, I did manage to get him uh, a bit more flat-handed after go, so he was just kind of inside, but not super deep, just kind of almost flat. I was also in the same kind of position, but that's the position where I can start to work. So I I knew that okay, that's where I'm gonna, I I didn't want to give up that one, so I was just. Kind 
kind of settling in, getting ready for a longer battle. Yeah, I think this Daniel is that you might think you know he's very static, a bit slow, you could say. So in some cases it is possible to just explode through that static position and try to pin the guy. For example, I'm sure that Engin Terzi would maybe just try to, you know, blast through Daniel. Um, go straight to the pad, which is in some way, like it makes sense. It's a little bit hard for Daniel to catch a very good hit. So where's, yeah, you could also try to use that strategy. Uh, but I am not necessarily that strong or an explosive, especially like kind of sideways. I'm never really going straight for a pin, so um, I really had no uh, time to readjust and prepare something like that for for that match. So for me, it was not even an option. But you know, maybe Engin Terzi would try that. But the problem is also that uh, the format is uh, best of seven. It's not just a single match, like an elimination tournament where you can quickly get the job done and move on. No, no, no. Here you have to do it again and again, at least four times in a row. So trust me, guys, even if you are able to blast through Daniel once or twice, I really doubt if anyone can ever um, do that four times in a row at his weight class, like 75 kilo. Uh, because you also get tired, you know, like it's... Uh, and Daniel has great endurance. I was checking uh, these um, cards with signatures, you know, and um, all the stats on the back of the card. Daniel, you know, of course he's very, he's very good, of course his stats are going to be very high, but um, and I think they are all, pretty much all of them are above 9 out of 10. But the only stat which Daniel has a 10 at is endurance. And rightly so. So yeah, you see how it's really, like in many ways it's very problematic. You cannot blast through him because most likely you will get tired and he will stop you anyways after a couple of rounds. And then suddenly, if you are that explosive guy, you will most likely not have the endurance to um, stay static with him. Yeah, so that's why it's just super difficult. Uh, it's a difficult uh, combination to beat. Very strong, very static, very good endurance. Strong hook, good hand, yeah. But okay, let's say I, I was able to take his hand round three. And, uh, you know, normally people would look at it and they would say, okay, Daniel lost his hand. The match is pretty much somehow over. Not many people, not many people can pull without their hand. Um, but for Daniel, it's different. For Daniel, that's where the match starts. Taking a hand is only like 10% of the job done. Um, and the, also another interesting thing is that, let's say we did end up in that position where we are somehow both a bit flat after go. I am partly engaged with my top row. He is kind of still in, in the hook. Um, it actually, becomes a bit more easy for him to maintain that, that um, position and his good angle if he just gives his wrist away. So it's not necessarily me taking that wrist. Of course, I think this time he didn't want to let, let it go, but normally um, it's probably even smarter for him to give it up earlier if he can see that the match is gonna be close. Because by giving it away, he can, you know, jump deeper, start to press better. 
the longer he tries to contain, um, the better I feel as a top roller. So yeah, the main detail here was obviously my ability to apply some good um, side pressure and use my shoulder a bit more, um, use the joint lock, which is somehow, I don't see that kind of position being used too often. People don't, to me it works only if I really rotate my body uh, like crazy. Uh, and when I, I feel the lock and it's quite efficient and I can stay in that lock for a long time. But also I found it quite recently. And if you don't do that, suddenly you are in your muscles and the muscle will get tired very soon. Yeah, so here the main key was my ability to really erode in my body, make sure that the arm doesn't open anymore. So when I sit up on my joints, and then I was trying to put Dane, like um, put him on his biceps instead of allowing him to just continue pressing like that. So yeah, all of it obviously requires a good endurance, good positioning. I'm just happy that it worked well. I can tell you that my JM exercises for sure helped here, like it still felt exactly the position that I, which I worked uh, in the gym. Yeah, what else? Yeah, it's good times, good times. I feel like I am able to stay in a good shape without really trying too hard. Um, the program is uh, becoming very smart, I feel like. I'm not even changing anything anymore, just always consistently the same thing. Table time for kind of conditioning endurance, rubber bands for explosiveness and maximum like peak power. Gym is for recovery, blood flow, healthy muscles, full range. So that kind of thing allows me to really feel very comfortable at all times no injuries good diet is helping a lot of meat fatty meat but yeah so I will now for sure enjoy watching Daniel's ma future matches I'm pretty sure he'll keep killing people it's super difficult to go around his, uh, his strength Meanwhile, we are getting ready for Makarov, Artur Makarov. Yeah, that, um, during my time, when I was kind of yeah, quite active back in 2015, 16, 17, 18 and so on, um, at Buff, Makarov was the guy who would um, really keep killing everyone at 70 and 75 kilo weight classes yeah I think he only went 75 I, I never met him at 75 I think it was always at 70 and he also used to be Daniel back then um, quite convincingly but I think me and Daniel we both improved quite a bit not sure if Makarov made any big improvements. He's still, of course, in very good shape. But maybe now we have a better chance at beating him. The guy's genetically just uh, very gifted. His arms are both looking similar to Oleg Jok's arm. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting. If I could beat Makaro, it would really be great. 
but the challenge is very different here. Like Daniel was much more static. Makarov is very explosive. So I would probably have to focus a bit more on um, also being matching his explosiveness a little bit so I can stop the hit a bit better. But I do have a feeling that um, it might be a bit easier to fight for the hand here. Daniel was really good in the hand this time. I have a feeling that Makarov's short fingers might be a bit easier to open. He does have a very quick um, hooking move, so I would still have to be careful. But. Um, Somehow I do have a feeling that it would be a bit easier to open his hand. But anyways, yeah, these are my thoughts, guys. Many of you, yeah, thank you for everyone who supported me. I got many, many good messages. Congratulations. So that's pretty cool. I will have my belt at home. Enjoy that belt for at least a couple more months. And hopefully we can uh, keep the title after the fight with Makaro also. What else can I say? Yeah, Daniel, I think Daniel took the loss very, very well. He was not bothered at all. He was just like, okay, let's get back to training. More wrist, more endurance. Even if that's necessarily the answer, even if he will, like if he works on his wrist and endurance, I don't think it will really help him. Here, he almost has to solve this kind of positioning. But still, like, uh, he took it very well. Yeah, I guess he was dominating for quite a long time, you know, worlds, east versus west, even these uh, world combat games in Saudi Arabia, he, he won the 80 kilo class on the right, so he might, maybe he's just happy to uh, have a good opponent. What else can I say, guys? I guess it's just a kind of video about a bit of everything. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And um, I think I will just end it here. See you next time.